Hello, and welcome to my first ever park review. Today, we are going to review Six Flags Magic Mountain, the thrill capital of the world. This park is located in Valencia, California, and this is just north of Los Angeles. This park is known for their roller coasters. In fact, there are 19 of them. And just a heads up, I will not be discussing every roller coaster in the park. So without further ado, here is my review of Six Flags Magic Mountain. We are now on the bus. So the way this park is set up is the parking lot is way, way, way behind. So you either have to cough up some money for preferred parking, cough up money for valet, or take the cheapest route, which we're doing, which is you park all the way in overflow, especially on a busy day like today, and you can either do the long walk or what we're doing is we're taking a bus. We did have to wait for the bus, but luckily two buses are running, so that is nice to know. When you enter the park, the first roller coaster you will come across is Full Throttle. This is one of the most popular rides at the park. For three days I was there, I learned that the lines for the back of the park don't fill up until later in the afternoon. Therefore, be sure to hit the back of the park first, especially Twisted Colossus. This is my favorite ride at the park because it provides airtime and is one of the park's longer coasters as you go up two lift hills. When I was in the Looney Tunes area to get three of the four kitty coaster credits, I enjoyed the theming. It was impressive for a Six Flags park. I also liked the theming in the DC Superheroes area. It was a nice touch to read the mailbox, and the queue line for Lex Luthor Drop of Doom was themed almost on par as Disney and Universal. Because it used to be an arcade, it is air-conditioned too, which is nice on a hot summer day, because it does get hot here in California. They have Batman the Ride, a cookie-cutter b and invert coaster, found at many other Six Flags parks. This is my favorite version. It is also one of the least popular rides, aside from Viper, so it's very rewritable. Behind me is an awesome B&M stand-up coaster. That awesome B&M stand-up coaster that I was talking about is Riddler's Revenge. It is the tallest, fastest, and longest B&M stand-up coaster in the world, and it is one of the best. It's very smooth as well. To add on to this awesomeness, it even has a single rider line, too. Speaking of DC superheroes, Six Flags Magic Mountain has a version of the Justice League Dark Rides that can be found at the other Six Flags parks. However, this version was one of the best. I was able to take a walkthrough tour as I was an attendee of CoasterCon 2019. This was my first time walking through a dark ride and it was a really cool experience. Six Flags, if you're watching this, thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Up on the San Mary Summit, you'll find Superman Escape from Krypton and Ninja. Ninja had a long line when I was there, but I still went on it and it was a really fun ride. Ninja is a suspended swinging roller coaster by Aerodynamics. It is one of the very few remaining in the world and it is one of the faster ones. It is built on a hill which adds to the experience. Superman Escape from Krypton is the granddaddy of this summit as it towers 400 feet in the air. This Intamin roller coaster reaches speeds of around 100 miles per hour. It is a really quick but powerful roller coaster, and I highly recommend waiting for the back row on this behemoth. If you walk from the San Mary Summit down the steep hill over towards the back of the park, you get a great view of the Ninja roller coaster, as well as the area where West Coast Racers and Apocalypse are located. This area is called the underground, but do not confuse it with being underground as these roller coasters definitely are above ground. I strongly advise people who are going from the back of the park to the Sam Murray Summit to walk through the underground area to avoid walking up the steep hill. When you approach the roller coaster Tatsu, there is a set of stairs and those stairs are your ticket to the Sam Murray Summit and a great alternative to walking up that steep hill. Tatsu is a B&M flying coaster, and it is the tallest and longest and fastest B&M flying coaster in the United States. Believe it or not, I named my dog after this roller coaster. If you are wondering what that loop is that looks definitely not like Tatsu, 
It's a different roller coaster. It's called the New Revolution, and this roller coaster is an ace landmark, and it is definitely a fun ride. However, it had a long wait because it was operating with one train as the other train was at Six Flags over Georgia. X2 is one of the very few 4D free fly coasters in the world, and it's the only one in the US. It was a really cool ride, and you flip upside down as well as your seat. I don't even remember parts of the ride. That's how insane it was. It truly is an extreme experience. At one point, there was even onboard audio, which added to the experience. Unfortunately, it was not on during CoasterCon 2019. When you ride X2, I strongly recommend sitting in the back. The best seat on the ride is the one closest to the track. All theme parks have their pros and cons, and Six Flags Magic Mountain is definitely no exception. There are some pros, obviously their roller coasters and year on operations make for a very good theme park. It is my third favorite Six Flags park, however it is not my favorite theme park in the world. One of the reasons is because it is on a hill, which is something the park cannot control, but it does get very tiring walking up that hill. So keep that in mind if you're visiting. Also, this is not a park you can cover in one day. Two days is highly recommended for this giant park. and. Definitely, if necessary, buy a flash pass to make sure you get on all the rides. I wasn't thrilled when Scream only had one train operations, and this drives me nuts when any theme park only operates a ride with one train. Something that is neither good or bad at this park is the food. The food is your typical Six Flags cuisine, and if you eat at the right places, the food can be very good. I like that Six Flags has used 2020 to improve their mobile ordering service. That way you don't have to wait in line for the food because you already spent enough time in line for the rides. So I also like that they are improving their menu options by adding tacos into the area where West Coast Racers is located. I wish it was open so I could try some, but next time I go to the park I'll be sure to try some of those tacos that I've heard amazing things of. As goes for all Six Flags parks, the food is going to be very, very expensive. It is more expensive than Disney World and Disneyland. However, this is not the case if you are a member, because depending on your membership status, you will receive up to half off of your food. Still, the pros of this amazing Six Flags park definitely outweigh the cons, so if you are dealing with snow in the wintertime, and you happen to have a season pass to a Six Flags park, you can actually fly out to California and use your season pass or membership at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Special thanks to Six Flags Magic Mountain for putting on an awesome CoasterCon 2019 and for building amazing roller coasters and providing amazing hospitality. Six Flags, you rock. I highly recommend visiting this theme park, and I would love to hear your thoughts about this theme park in the comments below. Also, while you're at it, please hit that like button and subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. And anyways, that's a wrap, and thank you for watching. Goodbye.